After Rembrandt, Vincent van Gogh is considered the most well-known artist of all time. Even though he never received any formal training, only painted for 10 years of his life, and remained poor and virtually unknown while he was alive. His post-impressionistic art is known for its beauty, imagination, and use of color. This mini-documentary will examine his early life, upbringing, struggles with mental illness and epilepsy, and show some of his most famous works along with the photos of his house and his brother whom he was closest to in his family. Vincent Willem van Gogh was born on March 30, 1853 in the Netherlands. His father was a strict country minister and his mother was an artist who loved watercolors and painting nature, and as a result instilled in Vincent a love of art from a young age. Vincent was born exactly one year to the day after his parents' firstborn son was stillborn. They both shared the same name. Conceivably, seeing his name and birth date on his dead brother's headstone led to his lifelong feelings of inadequacy and melancholy. At the age of 15, Vincent's family fell on economic hard times and he had to leave school and go to work. His first job was working for his uncle in an art gallery and then later he moved to London. In London, he fell in love with the English culture and was fluent not only in Dutch, but French, German, and English as well. In his free time, he would walk around the city and visit art galleries and began reading authors such as Charles Dickens and George Eliot. Art and the English culture weren't the only things that Vincent fell in love with while in London. During his time there, he fell madly in love with his landlady's daughter. She, however, refused his romantic advances and this threw him into a severe depression. After the rejection, he threw away all of his beloved books except for his Bible. Soon after his bout with depression, he was fired from his job, and around 1876 began teaching at a school for poor English boys. Even though he had been brought up in a highly religious family, it wasn't until this time that Van Gogh believed his calling was to become a minister. He made the decision to turn his back on the art world and completely dedicated himself to becoming a man of God and clergyman, just as his father was and his grandfather had been. What Vincent lacked, though, was the ability to inspire those who heard his sermons. This didn't dissuade him, however, and in his spare time on Sundays, he would attend and listen to four to five sermons in different churches. It wasn't for the lack of desire, but his refusal to learn Latin, which was a requirement to pass his entrance exam into the School of Theology, and that resulted in him being denied admittance. His family had never really believed in or supported his ability to be a clergyman, and as time drew on, Vincent became increasingly anxious, uneasy, and withdrawn. As a last-ditch effort to help his son, his father helped Vincent be accepted into an evangelical course, but again, Vincent proved to be stubborn and disinterested. It wasn't long after that his father, Theodorus, started receiving reports of Vincent's erratic behavior, sleeping on the floor, and starving himself. Much of what we know about Vincent comes from letters that he wrote. In all, he wrote 800 letters to family and friends, but the majority of them were to his brother, Theo Van Gogh. Vincent's relationship with his parents was most of the time, at best, a rocky one. The one person that he stayed consistently close to, though, was his brother, who was an art dealer. Theo and Vincent wrote letters to each other on a regular basis. Theo kept all of Vincent's letters, however, Vincent kept relatively few of Theo's. In 1880, after several unsuccessful attempts at odd jobs, and even though he had no formal education or training in art or painting, Vincent moved to Brussels and decided to become an artist with his brother Theo's financial backing. Vincent's professional life wasn't the only element of his life that was in disarray. He had a catastrophic personal life with women as well. He had already suffered rejection from the landlady's daughter. Then he fell in love with his cousin Kate, who rejected him as well and moved to Amsterdam in order to avoid him. After that, he fell in love with an alcoholic prostitute named Clarissa Hornick. Being religious as they were, Vincent's family disapproved and despised the relationship and threatened to cut all ties with him because of it. But Vincent wasn't concerned about this, and Clarissa became his model for several paintings, showing him compassion and was his mistress for a while, but eventually she decided to return to prostitution. This was the third failed attempt at a relationship, and this rejection again threw Vincent into a tailspin and hurled him into depression. After their split, he spent the next few months in ill health living a nomadic life and living among common, hard-working, everyday people. It was from his interaction with them that he drew his inspiration for many of his paintings. The Potato Eaters was Vincent's first and only successful painting while he was alive. 
It was painted in 1885 and represents the connection he felt with the working class. In 1886, Vincent decided to move to Paris and showed up unannounced at his brother Theo's apartment doorstep. Theo graciously let Vincent stay. It was in Paris that Vincent was first introduced to the Impressionist painting style and famous artists of the time such as Pissarro, Monet, and Gauguin. He liked their techniques very much, but it didn't quite fit into his style of painting, so he changed it to be more of his own by using more distinct brushstrokes and lighter colors. He became infatuated with the color yellow and was in search of the perfect yellow for many years. You can see in his affinity for this color in many of his paintings. And true to form, though, Vincent was difficult to get along with and insisted on bickering with many of the other off off artists, making himself somewhat of an outcast. In February 1888, Vincent packed up and moved to a small village in the south of France called Arles, where he spent the last two years of his life. It was during these last two years that Vincent painted the most, creating more than 800 oil paintings. In Arles, Vincent spent most of his money on paint and supplies instead of on food. He mainly lived on coffee, bread, and absinthe. He started to feel sick and strange and was known to have eaten paint and drink turpentine, showing not only was his physical health declining, but also his mental stability. Van Gogh suffered from psychotic episodes and delusions, and though he worried about his mental stability, he often neglected his own physical health by not eating properly and drinking heavily. Theo was concerned about his brother's behavior and health, so paid another artist, Paul Gauguin, to travel to Arles and watch over Vincent. As you might expect, though, Vincent was difficult to get along with, and it wasn't long after the Gauguin's arrival that the two started arguing incessantly. After Gauguin stormed out of the house one night, Van Gogh followed him and cut off his ear. Later that same night, Vincent went to a brothel and asked a prostitute to keep his ear and hold it in safekeeping. The next morning, police went to his bedroom to check on him and found him in a weakened state, and he was then admitted to a hospital. Theo, hearing the troubling news, traveled to Arles to see his brother and visited him in the hospital. When Theo arrived, he found Vincent weakened from blood loss and suffering from seizures. Vincent did recover, but his condition continued to deteriorate. After he was released from the hospital and back home, he once again became depressed, sullen, and lonely. Unable to be alone, Vincent returned to the hospital. During the day, he would leave to paint, and at night, he would return. It wasn't long after that the townspeople signed a petition saying that he was unstable and unsafe for the community, and he was then moved to an asylum in St. Remy. During his stay in the asylum, Vincent kept himself occupied by painting and creating six paintings. This painting, titled Starry Night, is one such painting that he created during this time. Again, Vincent's brother stepped in, trying to help and care for his brother. He made arrangements with Dr. Goget, who agreed to watch over Vincent and let him rent a room in his house in a town 20 miles away. Theo came to visit his brother and scolded him for being reckless with his finances, and this scolding caused Vincent to feel distraught because he thought his brother was no longer wanting to sell his art. On July 27, 1890, Vincent went out to paint as he usually did each morning, but this time he brought with him a pistol in his pocket. He shot himself in the chest, but amazingly, this didn't kill him immediately. Vincent was hospitalized, and the doctor sent for his brother. Upon his arrival, Theo found Vincent lying in the hospital bed, smoking a pipe. Over the next few days, the two brothers spent time together and talked. Vincent died in his brother's arms on July 29, 1890, at the age of 37. In his short lifetime, Vincent van Gogh created 900 paintings and 1,100 drawings, which is amazing considering he only painted for 9 or 10 years of his life. This is an average of two paintings per week. During his lifetime, he only sold one painting and was considered at the time of his death to be a madman and utter failure. His paintings now, though, have sold for over $66 million, and he continues to have a huge impact on modern art.